great job, Wookiees. I wonder who came up with that name. <laughs> um, I know you're probably wondering who's this guy. He didn't even make it on the agenda. I assure you, I'll only take a few minutes of your time. Uh, as Jordan mentioned, I'm an eighth grade science teacher at Goshen Middle School, and uh, we have two pathways of learning there, uh, IB and project-based learning. I'm part of the project-based learning side. And uh, <clears throat> instead of a traditional pathway that, let's say you take a science standard like uh, uh, what makes up matter and give kids worksheets, we use projects as a main uh, way for our students to learn. And uh, we've partnered with Soil and Water Conservation District here recently, and I just want to highlight some things from that. Um, our first project was one about um, stormwater runoff in Goshen Middle School. We recently have done some construction at the Aquatic Center, and so it was uh, looked over by Soil and Water Conservation District to make sure that we were dealing with our stormwater effectively. But we could always uh, improve on that, so instead of teaching from a book or different other activities, we decided our project was centered around how we handle our stormwater at Goshen Middle School. And this was a letter that Jordan wrote to our students. We call it an entry document. The Elkhart County Soil Water Conservation District Board, the Elkhart County Stormwater Board, and your own school board would like your help, the students, this is written to our students, in finding options to better the stormwater management at Goshen Middle School. We're counting on you to find innovative ideas to manage stormwater economically, safely, and efficiently. Each project has a desired deliverable outcome that you will have the opportunity to present to board members, that's our school board, at the completion of the project. Based on this entry document and work we've done with uh, SWCD, we identified six areas that students would look at research and come up with feasible plans. Um, the problem statement on the left is from one of the presentations that they will give to our school board. This is just one slide in about a 10 or 13 slide presentation. And this group was in charge of researching rain gardens. That we currently have no rain gardens at the middle school and we could really utilize that. But the six areas that we identified are rain gardens is one, Rain barrels, infiltration basin, which we have, is doing very effective. Detention basin, sediment load. Detention basin, trash in our inlet. And vegetation. And so these six areas were divvied up between our many groups because it's group, it's more group learning than individual. And each group took on one of these and came up with a feasible plan. Once they had a plan in place, we invited, again, through the help of Jordan and Jim, uh, 10 experts in the field of stormwater, including the landscape architect that was in charge of coming up with the plan, I guess, for our middle school and its stormwater runoff, as well as other experts. And they came into our school and talked to our students. Really, the students did the talking, and they gave them feedback. They uh, gave their plan, and this, as I said already, was just one page of this group's plan for uh, implementing rain gardens around the 38 different drains we have that go into our detention basin. Um, so they got to share with these experts and the experts then gave them feedback on their plan, how feasible it was, uh, some areas that they need to improve on before we go to our school board. So as you can see, the project is authentic and it is community-based and we have community partners of which could never happen if we didn't have our partnership which is a very new partnership, I might add, with the Soil and Water Conservation District here. Um, and so they were extremely helpful. We really, it was a win-win situation for both uh, sides. Uh, Jordan was in with their augmented reality sandbox, which was stationed in my room, and I got to play with during lunchtime. <laughs> she did okay that. But, so kids were excited, and these are the kind of events that are real to them and that can really affect their engagement in school. So that was one project that ended at the end of December. We have yet to uh, submit these plans to the school board. We're still waiting on some money to bank our rain barrels, which may or may not come. So, but that's our last step, and then we'll present that to, the, to our school board as a feasible plan for these different areas. Uh, the second uh, 
<clears throat> the project that we undertook, instead of just teaching balancing equations and different bonding ionic and covalent bonds, can be kind of dry, as some of you I know are already yawning, just listening to that from chemistry class. So we decided to talk about pollutants that run off of our various um, yards, homes, uh, Goshen Middle School, businesses, and, and farm, whatever, these different pollutants. And we identified 11 pollutants that could be possible problems that can run into our rivers and cause uh, problems. So we're still near the end of this project, but students had the directive, and again, Jordan wrote a letter to them, the Elkhart County SWC Board and the Elkhart County Stormwater Partnership would like your help in developing lesson plans about water quality, water quality geared for elementary students. We would like to see background information about a pollutant, a worksheet or activity, and for the lesson to connect back to the real world and our community. What can you do to reduce this pollutant? One of our standards in eighth grade is about human impact and how we can reduce our impact on the environment. So the students, uh, again, were uh, put in groups, some they decided to be in groups, and tackled this problem as a real world problem. And these lesson plans will make it to uh, Elkhart County SWCD's webpage where elementary teachers from our county, and I guess the world, could access these lesson plans that were written by eighth graders. Now we just don't let them write anything, of course. We have other partners, elementary teachers, that look over these plans as well as ourselves uh, before they're submitted. But we're close to this completion, and you can see a couple lesson plans here that are partially completed. Um, so they include an, a complete lesson plan, an activity or lab, an assessment of some kind, like a quiz. Uh, they also include <coughs> A uh, activity, as I mentioned, and uh, a connection to our community, and that is uh, the Elkhart River and the St. Joseph River. So it's real world stuff. They're looking at chemical pollutants like phosphates and nitrates and pesticides and fertilizers, and they have to do the research and they discover, um, like one of the Wookiees said, it's much better for them to discover than simply to learn. And so they discover on their own these solutions and come up, have to come up with solutions for uh, these elementary students. So it's quite, a, quite an interesting project. And I just have to leave you with one quote from one of my students. Uh, I can't even finish my sentences anymore. She just says, yes, I know, Mr. Katzer. It all flows into the Elkhart River. <laughs> so we're making some headway. And thank you for your time and your support.